pretty nice day outside sunny and everything um, so I got some things done uh, you know I, I was kind of curious uh, about you know because it doesn't it seem to you like you know we're hearing a lot and I mean a lot about uh, books being banned in schools and libraries across the country I mean it seems like a topic that comes out quite a bit here um, at least within the last two years at least I've seemed to hear a lot about you know almost every day there's some new book that they don't want people to read uh, there, including a book that was written by George Takei uh, detailing his experiences in the uh, when as a kid when he was in the, uh, one of those uh, 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 camps here for for the uh, Asian Americans during World War II uh, that he stayed in and now they ban that book in in, in the places in America and I'm like why <laughs> you know I mean we've got tons of books out there about World War II and and, and uh, examining it from every angle uh, so why is it that we can't look at this story here I mean it's not like they, you can't buy this book if you want a book uh, to see it it's just the idea that they banned it and it's like you know you can't I mean if they're banning the book because they don't want people to th think that America is, is a bad place uh, then, you know, you're going to lose that battle because there's a lot of things that's happened in this country that are bad, you know, like what we've done to the Native Americans when we, when we came over here, you know, and then let's talk about the slave uh, era, okay, and, you know, the, our country's made a lot of mistakes, and burying our head in the sand about those mistakes doesn't solve a goddamn thing, and, and historians will agree with me on that, okay, how are we ever going to improve on ourselves if we can't remember where the hell we've been? So anyway, I was I was really curious because I want to know I want to know how how big is this pile of books that it, the that the right wing wants to burn. So I found an article here from the Washington Post, and this was written uh, April seventh. Oh All right, uh, and it's uh, it's written by Hannah Natanson entitled, More Books Are Banned Than Ever Before As Congress Takes On The Issue. 
Uh, two reports this week show the United States is facing an unprecedented wave of school book banning, spurring Congress to hold a hearing Thursday focused on the issue which free speech advocates warn will undermine democracy. Uh, Pen America, a nonprofit that advocates for freedom of expression, found there have been 1,586 book bans in schools over the past nine months. Nine months! The bans targeted 1,145 unique books by more than 800 authors, and a plural, plurality of the books, 41%, featured prominent characters who are people of color. 33% of the banned books, meanwhile, included LGBTQ themes, prop, uh, prop, uh, protagonists, or strong secondary characters, and 22% quote, directly addresses issues of race and racism, unquote. Also this week, the American Library Association published its annual report on book censorship, revealing that it had tracked 729 attempts to remove library, school, and university materials in 2021, leading to 1,597 book challenges or removals. That is the highest number recorded since the association began tracking the phenomena 20 years ago. For comparison, the association counted challenges for bans of 273 books in 2020, 377 in 2019, and 483 in 2018. Most titles targeted in 2021 were written by or about LGBTQ or black individuals. Quote, book challenges in America uh, are nothing new. But this type of data has never been tallied, and quite frankly, the results are shocking, unquote, said Jonathan Friedman of PEN America, who was the lead author of the report. Quote, what is happening in this country in terms of banning books in schools is unparalleled in its frequency, intensity, and success. This is an orchestrated attack on books whose subjects only recently gained a foothold on school library shelves and in classrooms. Both reports come as an ascendant conservative-led movement is scrutinizing and questioning almost every aspect of public education. Right-wing politicians, pundits, and parents are objecting to how teachers discuss race, racism, history, gender, and sexuality in schools, alleging that some curriculums meant to be inclusive of a larger range of identities amount to liberal indoctrination and even sexual grooming. Republican legislatures are also passing state-level legislation that restricts what teachers can say about race, sex, and gender. Since January 2021, 15 states have enacted laws limiting how teachers can discuss issues such as racism and sexism, according to a Penn America analysis, while 175 similar, quote, educational gag order bills, unquote, have been introduced in 40 states. Last month, Florida passed a law prohibiting teachers from discussing gender identity or sexuality in grades K uh, to 3. At the district level, meanwhile, books are, are ban, uh, prolif uh, proliferating, as the two reports suggest and as the Washington Post reported. The Post reported that many books, book removals are taking place in secret by administrators wary of controversy a finding the Penn America report supports. The report found that 98% of the more than 1,500 book bans it tracked took place when administrators acted covertly or outside of the normal process uh, schools have set up to handle book challenges. Schools typically maintain processes that require the, inf uh, the formation of review committees to examine challenged books and decide after weeks or months of study whether they should remain on shelves or disappear. Quote, most bans and restrictions have occurred without proper written forms, review committees, or transparency, unquote, the report concludes. Quote, while school boards and administrators do have some discretion over library and instructional materials, there are safeguards and best practices meant to protect students' First Amendment rights that are being wildly abrogated, unquote. Citing the American Library Association findings and news reports of banned books, the House Committee on Oversight and Reform held a hearing Thursday to examine what members called in a statement, quote, the ongoing efforts across the country to ban books from schools and public libraries, unquote. <clears throat> the committee called witnesses 
including high school students in Pennsylvania and Washington, librarians, teachers, and parents from Pennsylvania and Virginia, and Ruby Bridges, the civil rights activist and author. One of the most challenged books of the past year was the children's book, quote, Ruby Bridges Goes to School, unquote, which chronicles Bridges' experiences in 1960 as the first black child to integrate a, into a New Orleans school. Quote, my books are written to bring people together. Why would they be banned? Unquote. Bridges asked the committee, quote, when I share my experiences and my story in these books, I share our, his our shared history, good, bad, and ugly, unquote. Launching the panel Thursday morning, Representative Jamie B. Raskin, Democrat from Maryland, said that, quote, basic intellectual freedoms are under attack, unquote. He added, quote, everyone is offended by something, and that is why other people's level of offense cannot be the metric, unquote, for deciding what is worth learning or reading. The state that saw the most book bans, according to PEN America, was Texas with 713. Pennsylvania was second with 456 books banned, and Florida third with 204 banned. The top three banned titles, according to PEN America, are Gender Queer by Maya Kobabi, uh, All Boys Aren't Blue by George Johnson, and Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison. Uh, Gender Queer, a graphic novel about being non-binary, is banned in 30 districts. Quote, All Boys Aren't Blue, unquote, a memoir about growing up black and queer is gone from 21 districts. And Lawn Boy, a young adult novel that includes a description of a sexual encounter between two fourth grade boys, has been yanked from 16 districts. Uh, the Bluest Eyes by Nobel Prize uh, Loretta Tony Morrison is the fifth most banned book, having been pulled from 12 districts per Pen America. Uh, in their testimony before Congress on Thursday, the three high schoolers shared <clears throat> how books and book removals have shaped their lives so far. Uh, Olivia uh, Pittuck, a senior from York County, Pennsylvania, who identifies as LGBTQ, said she would have, quote, been able to embrace and love myself a lot earlier on, unquote, if she could have easily found books that featured people like her. Christina Elias, a high schooler from the same county who was black, said she spent much of her school career straightening her hair to avoid standing out and to prevent peers from touching her hair. She also refrained from bringing Car Caribbean food to lunch, quote, to avoid snarky comments, unquote. She said she wanted to testify before Congress to ensure that children who look like her do not suffer similar experiences. Quote, banning books of those minority backgrounds and unique backgrounds silences their voices and erases their history, unquote, she said. Quote, it's not indoctrination, it's education, unquote. Most other speakers also argued for the importance of access to a wide range of books. Samantha Hull, a school librarian from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, said school librarians are fighting to keep books on the shelves across the country. She also challenged the argument advanced by many on the right that lessons and books about systemic racism and white supremacy should be curtailed because they make white children feel uncomfortable. Quote, growth does not always occur when we are comfortable, unquote, Hull said. Quote, without safe places to read, think, and discuss, we have no future, unquote. One witness called by the committee of minority, Jonathan Pidlunzi of the Conservative Education Group, the American Council of Trust Trustees and Alumni argued that the country's true censorship crisis is taking place on college campuses. He said that students are shouting down speakers whose views they disagree with and that liberals are, quote, reporting young Republicans for every conceivable instance of wrong think, unquote. This mirrored arguments advanced by Republican members of the committee during questioning, all of whom insisted the real problem is a culture of fear and censorship at the college level. Near the end of his statement, Pidlunzi said he realized the hearing was supposed to focus on K through 12 issues. He said he had three points to make about K through 12 censorship. First, that schools are funded by taxpayers who should have the right to shape what children learn. Second, it is the, quote, essence of representative democracy, unquote, for elected officials at the district and state levels to set school curriculums in response to constituents' concerns. Third, the books available in schools must be age appropriate. 
Pedlunzi alleged that the books being challenged in K through 12 settings, quote, generally contain age inappropriate sexual contact, unquote. Representative Nancy Mace, Republican from South Carolina, said conservatives are facing attacks, quote, every single day, unquote, for their beliefs. Censorship on college campuses and, quote, censorship on social media, that is far more dangerous, I think, than what we're hearing from our witnesses today, unquote, she said. Quote, and I experienced it myself, unquote, she said, referring to an incident in summer of 2021 when her house was spray painted with profane insults. At the hearing's close, Raskin noted that it can be very easy to feel that one or whatever group one identifies with is being unfairly targeted to made a victim. Uh, quote, I think that we're going to advance the First Amendment values that all of us hold dear if all of us can step a little bit beyond our own sense of grievance and indignation, unquote, he said, quote, as if we were the first group ever to be marginalized, unquote. Uh, I feel like, you know, when I, when I was reading this article that, you know, this was like something that would have been written decades ago in a time when, uh, you know, Puritans basically walked around, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, of course, you know, Pennsylvania, you know, is like sort of the, the home state there for Puritanism in the first place, right? I mean, as, as far as I know, I mean, I, I went down to that state and, you know, they seem to be sort of like that everywhere in that, in that state. Uh, and, of course, that would be a, a perfect breeding ground for extreme right-wing notions and stuff. But the idea that so many books, 1,500 books... In the last nine months, not even a year, people, not even a fucking year, nine months, 15, over 1,500 books have been challenged or banned in the United States. Uh, and they say, well, it's because there's sexual content in it that's on age. Well, let's, why don't we go over some of that stuff? Because, you know, that's relative. That's relative. Some people find walking around with no t shirt on uh, as, you know, inappropriate for somebody in the 12th grade. I mean, you've got people with, with soft, you know, soft uh, core uh, that can't stand to, to look at someone's bare arms, for Christ's sake. So when, when they talk about sexual content, what exactly do they mean by that? Because you can say that, but if, you, if what you're, you're saying is a generalization of what's in the book, and, in, uh, and pertaining to what content, context it's in, uh, it could have been necessary to write something in there about that in order to convey to the reader the seriousness or the importance of that time. You know, especially when you're talking about books that are, you know, like autobiographies or historical things. Uh, facts are very important in things like that. Uh, any fact that you can find that's relevant to that story is important. People shouldn't feel like they have to leave anything out. I mean, look at Schindler's List, for Christ's sake. When, they, when that movie was made, you know, did anybody come out and scream at Steven Spielberg when he offered to play that movie for free for everybody at home? Remember when that when he did that? I didn't see the uprising around the country saying, Oh, no, 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 no. You know, where, was, where were all these people that are banning books now? Where were they then? Okay. So I feel like a lot of this is just politically driven, okay? A lot of this is politically driven, and the reason I say that is because, as you know, <clears throat> as we all know, Republicans never have a fucking thing to run on when they run for office, okay? The issues they run on are social issues that they conjure up or create, you know, in... Uh, you know, way before the race begins, okay, and then that becomes the focus of their campaign, forcing the Democrats to leave out what they want to do and have to retaliate or or answer back all these things that they create. Because if they don't, who, what what who, what side do you think is going to win the argument when the Democrats ignore the bullshit that uh, Republicans are challenging them with, okay? You know, people are going to say, oh, they, they, they are, uh, the Republicans are right. They know they're right. And the Democrats are too afraid to say anything about it. That's the way we think. We don't, we don't recognize when we're being played like fucking 
fools here by the right wing. I mean, all all fucking year here, they've been uh, uh, co you know feeling around for ideas to run on, like you know critical race theory and uh, LGBTQ things, books. Uh, you know, they've been feeling around for topics to bring up for for campaign. Do you see that any of them talking about, you know, the problem uh, about gas or inflation or anything like that, running on anything like that? You know, do you see them talking uh, about, you know, uh, the problem of homelessness and, and stuff in this country? And, you know, you know, saying that the things people really do uh, think about when they're not thinking about the crap that's on Fox News, okay? The, you know, the everyday stuff people talk about. Do you see Republicans talking about fucking global warming or it, or ways we can f combat it or something like that? You know, <clears throat> no. What what they do is they they attack Biden on anything he tries to do, and that becomes their their core uh, campaign. You know, uh, they've been uh, attacking Biden on inflation. You know, on the prices of things going up. Okay. And the Democrats have been responding to that in the wrong way, okay? Uh, here's the thing. The Democrats have been saying here for, for weeks that, oh, we're, we have the best economy we've ever had in a long time, okay? You know, I don't know how long back they're thinking, but they say right now is the, the economy is at its best. Here's the catch, though, to that. And this is something that Republicans, you know, have the, have the advantage when people go shopping to buy food or they go to the pump to get gas, when they reach into their wallet and there's nothing in there to pay for what they want, people aren't gonna believe the economy is the best it's ever been. I don't care how well uh, Joe Biden uh, explains this or how well the, the pundits are on the left try to explain this. The, the bottom line is, and people are, 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 this is the way people will think. If they look in their wallet and it's empty, they're not going to think, or they're not going to believe you. They're just not going to believe it. I, I don't care if there is no unemployment rate in, anymore in this country. I don't care if every every single person is is making, making ends meet and they're working, okay? If they can't afford what's in the stores to buy and they can't afford to go anywhere because they ain't got enough money to buy gas... People are not are not going to believe the economy is doing well. The people gauge the the uh, the uh, the success of our economy by what we can buy, what we can do with our money. Okay, that's what they gauge it by. They don't care if there's a twenty percent unemployment rate. Okay, they don't care about that. It's only the other uh, eighty percent that uh, if they can go to Disneyland whenever the hell they want, or they can go buy as much gas as they want. Those are, those are the people, ultimately, who will decide if the economy is doing great or not. Doesn't matter about the other 20% that are out of work, living on the streets, you know, whatever. They, they don't care. They don't care about them. It's only about, the, you know, themselves. Okay? And as much as you keep harping on the fact that there's so many people out of work and stuff like that, they're, they're not going to listen. People only gauge how well the economy is doing by what they can do with their money. And that's, that's a... You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's a really basic, understandable thing. And that's, the, some, that's something Democrats haven't recently been trying to understand. Okay, they're so, they're so in, uh, engrossed in the narrative that the economy is doing the best it's ever been, but they're not really talking to the people on the street. People are bitching right now. You go to the supermarket to buy some meat, and it costs a fortune. <laughs> Okay, if people can't eat their meat, and this is a meat-eating country here, okay? <laughs> a chicken just ain't gonna cut it here. Um, people like their meat, and if they can't buy their fucking meat at the store uh, for under $10,000, okay, they're not gonna care about how you think the economy's doing. They're only gonna care about how they feel about how the economy's doing, and at the end of the day, when they go vote, that's what they're going to vote, uh, you know? That's how they'll vote. So, um... But the Republicans have been, you know, attacking Biden on the economy like that. And the Democrats just don't seem to care about the uh, the angle that they're attacking them at. Instead of trying to, un, you know, uh, modify their opinion here about the economy by saying, well, yeah, we have a low unemployment rate. And yes, people are working. But A, the, the 
one person is working two, three jobs to make ends meet, and B, their, their salary is too fucking low, and C, food inflation is through the fucking roof. So it doesn't matter how good your economy is doing, those three things right there are going to bring it down in the end, in the long run, okay? So there, I mean, that's, that's the fact. That's the cold, hard facts that Democrats don't get right now in their party, is that the economy... Uh, in all, in reality, is not doing well enough. Okay, it's not doing well enough to service the people in America anymore. We are we are slowing ourselves down to a crawl in order to micromanage our lives to the last penny. <laughs> okay, and people don't like to do that. Now they want to go after the banks and say, you know, raise your interest rates. Okay, they want the banks to raise their interest rates to combat inflation to stop people from borrowing money. Well, it's too late for that. How many people walk around with credit cards already? You know, everybody's got one. Christ, I saw a bunch of kids the other day uh, buying something at uh, uh, buying something over at a restaurant, uh, and they paid with a credit card. Christ, they, were, they looked like they were 15, 16 years old. It's like, well, where the hell do they get a goddamn credit card? <laughs> you know, they're already learning. So it's too late now to try to wean people off of credit buying. Okay, this has been going on for 40 fucking years. People, I mean, Ronald Reagan, you know, thanks to Ronald fucking Reagan who encouraged people to go out and buy and get credit cards. You know, he's basically, you know, opened the fucking door to, to hell and we can't close it now. People are going to credit buy until they're, they can't buy any more with it. So the interest rate thing is not going to help a, a goddamn bit. Okay, inflation will continue to be what it is. People are still not going to be able to buy what they want, okay? And everyone's still going to be struggling that they may have to go get a fourth job in order to get ahead of this ball, <laughs> okay? So don't tell me, or don't tell an uh, average citizen out on the street that the economy's doing well. It ain't. It ain't. It's doing well when people are able to go places and buy things, okay? That's when the economy does well, okay? So I'm sorry, you know, to Joe Biden and the Democrats who want to tell us, you know, this uh, fantasy here about how well the economy is doing. I don't buy it, okay? Because if I can't go out and get uh, and fill up my tank for under under 80, 80 bucks, okay, then the economy is not doing good. You know, the economy is not doing good. And I understand about supply chains being slowed down because of the pandemic. I do understand that, okay? Unfortunately, thanks to Bill Clinton, who signed NAFTA, we now have a global economy, which means we share everything in the world. That was going to be an albatross that nobody back then really saw. Uh, just a few Democrats warned uh, what would happen with that, and that's all come true now. Everything they said would happen with that has come true. We lost all our fucking manufacturing jobs in this country. You know, people are, are getting paid peanuts, okay, while, you know, the other countries are doing so well because they got our jobs, and those people are earning our fucking money. Okay, and we don't we don't produce anything, so we don't ship anything out. We don't get any money back. We're buying everybody else's stuff, but we're not. They're not. No one's buying anything of ours because we're not making anything. You see, that's the that was the reason why NAFTA was such a bad idea. And so here we are today. You know, no one ever thought that one day we might have a pandemic, and how is that going to affect a global economy? Nobody thought about that. They were just too interested in getting it started to think about what the downside would be to a, a, a global economy. Well, while we're living through it, see, we're, we look, like I told people before, humans learn the hard way. That's the only way we learn, okay? Nobody can warn us about mistakes we're going to make, okay? We have to go through the mistakes. We have to make the mistakes in order to learn, uh, to, you know, to understand, and sometimes we've got to go through those mistakes more than once, okay? Because we don't learn from history either. So it doesn't do any good for, for soothsayers to come out and say, oh, you're, you're gonna, your economy's going to collapse in nine months. You know, they're just going to laugh at you and just keep right on doing what they're doing until the economy does collapse. And then they're going to say, oh, oh what the hell happened? You know, the, a bubble burst somewhere. You know, it's insane you know, how humans are. But unfortunately, we're not as, as uh, advanced or as civilized as we want to think we are. Okay, we got a long friggin' way to go uh, before we can consider ourselves wise enough 
to understand when we're wrong. And we can't even admit when we're wrong, then, you know, we're still in our infancy. <laughs> All right, let's have a uh, commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dear CEO, what's it gonna take for you to do something? Yeah, do you even care? Climate change affects all of us. This is your chance to do something good. If I'm beaten and raped in the state of Texas, I have to give birth to the baby of my rapist. If I am raped by my father, brother, or uncle and get pregnant in the state of Texas, I have to give birth to the baby of my family abuser. This new law is so draconian that I can be prosecuted for having an abortion and so can my doctors, friends, and family who advise me, or even the Uber driver who simply drives me to the clinic. This is madness. The same people who have been protesting and screaming my body, my choice when it comes to the COVID vaccine are now saying I don't have any control over my own body. Texas Republicans won't require a 12-year-old girl to wear a mask in school that may save her life and the lives of other children, but they will force her to keep a baby regardless of how she got pregnant, including rape and incest. I am a woman, and I have a constitutional right to make decisions for my own body. I am a woman and I have a human right to refuse to give birth to my rapist's baby. I am a woman. This is my body. I am a woman. This is the United States of America. I am a woman. You do not own or control my mind or my body. Shame on the men and women who pass this law and shame on anyone who sits in silence while women suffer and die because of it. Build a super day? Then start with the one great taste that makes a super bowl of cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Just think of crispy golden flakes. Delicious, crunchy flakes of corn. So pure and simple, just can't wait. Low in sugar, loaded with vitamins and iron. So good for you, don't hesitate. For a super bowl of our most nutritious corn flakes ever. What a super bowl. Have yourself a super bowl. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Super taste, super good. a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th.
，所有人都叫了，要死。要命了！再给俺弄回去，我那个真要差点去了，操，麻烦了。根子啥么呢？因为所有的人，你都不晓得这个状态到底维持到啥个辰光。侬总要把个把个标准，或者是讲有一个具体的说法。没，侬讲过，闷闷了七天，当然我理想啊。不能出门啊！不是说不能出小区啊，这不行的嘛！再弄下就要出事情。Okay, that video、uh, is a video from the Guardian.、Uh, reporters on the ground、uh, in Shanghai, China, who were recording. The screams of people in their apartments in the city,、uh, of, of people shouting from their windows、uh, that they're starving, that they need help, they, they you know they're running out of supplies, and these people have been locked up in these、uh, apartments for over a week now. Okay, and、uh, why they're locked up in these apartments is because the, the COVID problem. Uh, over there is is very very bad. It's it, the outbreak. They have the newest outbreak over there is is really,、uh, really bad. And so,、uh, Chi, the president or whoever he is, there over there that runs that、uh, that country,、uh, has a zero COVID policy, which means they're cracking down on cities and neighborhoods and stuff like that by trying to keep people off the streets, away from each other. In an attempt to try to kill off the virus the best way they can. I mean, they don't have enough vaccines to go around. I mean, there's tw- there's just there's 25 million people who live in this in the city of Shanghai alone. Okay, that's more than that live in New York City. Okay,、um, so it's a big city, Shanghai, and these people. I guess they.、Uh, no one's listening to them, and I, and what happened is that. You know, while they're in these, they're, they're, while they're stuck in the buildings, okay.、Uh, officials, state officials of China, gone into the buildings and removed the doors off the hinges, okay, taking the doors out, and they took paper, and they put paper over the door entrances. Now, why did they do that? Well, you can't leave your apartment unless you rip the paper, okay. And if you, and if they come around and they see that the paper's been ripped,、uh, you know, bad shit's gonna happen. Okay, I don't know what what the consequences are, but being in China,、uh, you can bet you can imagine it's not going to be pleasant. All right, so people are basically trapped in there, and、uh, even though they can, you know, leave easy enough because the doors aren't locked, at least not those doors, but the outer doors to the buildings are locked.、Uh, they're they're they essentially they they have they stuck there. They're stuck in the buildings. Um, I can't imagine that that's gonna, you know, these people are gonna want to stay in there forever.、Uh, <laughs> okay, eventually there will probably be a revolt or something, and they're just gonna decide, you know, hey, we can either die here in the building or we can die out there on the street. Either way,、uh, we don't have to, we don't have to listen to this shit, you know. So why it hasn't happened yet, I don't know. Fear does quite a, quite a number on people,、um, but to hear all those people. Screaming, begging for help, and from what was reported, I think that you know the government of China is considering、uh, easing up on the restrictions. Okay, whatever that means, I don't know. Okay, that might be just something they said to placate the rest of the world that know about what's happening there,、uh, but that may not be、uh, something truthful,、uh, and that wouldn't surprise me either. You know that they would just. Sit there and let these people die in their own homes, okay?、Um, but you know, I've heard people that have seen this video say that that's something that's going to happen in America, <clears throat> and I disagree with that. And I'll tell you why.、Uh, do you think people who will not wear a mask 
when the government pleads with them to wear a mask to protect themselves against a dangerous virus, do you think people like that are going to obey in order to stay locked up in their apartments? <laughs> okay, I don't give a shit uh, what kind of government sitting in Washington, D.C. That ain't going to happen, okay? I know that as a fact. People in this country are stubborn. I mean, they, are, you, they don't, you have no idea how stubborn Americans can get, okay? I've seen the worst side of Americans in different sec, uh, you know, parts of my life. Okay, and I'm telling you right now, we have a rebellious streak in all of us. And anybody that pushes the right buttons in us, uh, they're going to unlock hell <laughs> from somebody or someone. And that's how you end up with dead cops on the street and how you end up with, uh, you know, shit that went on, that's going on in New York like today. Um, you, you have people that will take up arms and stuff like that for things that aren't even as, as as bad as what's happening in Shanghai right now. People basically just, you know, say, oh, you can't have a job, and they flip out and they go and kill everybody. You know, it's just, Americans are, are like that. We we have this stubborn, rebellious streak in us uh, where we're just waiting. You know, we're just waiting for something to happen so we can, you know, go ape shit on, on the whoever. <laughs> so it would never get to that point here in America where... We would voluntarily keep ourselves locked up. It wouldn't matter how many troops they put on the street, okay? People would be uh, uh, pl making plans on how to get, uh, how to retaliate on that, okay? Trust me. Um, so, <clears throat> that being said, uh, this stuff that's going on in China, you know, has nothing to do about an economy that isn't working for China, okay? Whoever's saying that is just trying to uh, draw a false comparison between uh, our economy and another economy, okay? You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to say that, oh, our economy is going to be like China's, and this is what happens if we have socialist uh, agenda in America. That ain't got a damn thing to do about what's happening right there in China, okay? This is about a pandemic that's run out of control in that country, and lots of people are dying, okay? And lots of other people are that are haven't died are starving because they can't go go get food, okay? They're not allowed to leave their fucking apartments, and nobody thought about what they're going to do with all these people that are stuck in their apartment. The government didn't think that far ahead. They just told them, put them, you know, don't let them out. Keep them in there. They didn't think, well, geez, what are we going to do when they get hungry? Nobody thought about that. They, they just took the order, and they went ahead and did it, you know? That's, that's people that don't defy because Americans would never do something like that. If they get an order like that from, you know, you're going to get pushback. <laughs> okay? You're going to get pushback. Uh, but these people don't because their whole life has been living under this authoritarian thing. You know, this government, this regime. So these people never knew a point, never knew anything about how to rebel against anybody. All right? Uh, that's not in their nature because it's been it's been pretty much bred out of them through generations of being oppressed by their government. Where here in America, we you know we haven't done that. We haven't done that. There hasn't been a generation, uh, you know, in America where our government has oppressed everybody. Okay, I mean, yes, we had slavery. That's that's a form of oppression. But even then, uh, you know, it didn't it didn't stop these people from actually uh, you know, defying. The slave owners and stuff like that you know they did have an underground they did try to escape okay so again not like china okay united states has you know never oppressed its own people the government and people that try to say that our government's heading in that direction have no fucking idea what they're talking about unless they've actually lived a year in china then they can talk about it and i can tell you right now we're not that we're not that close to being a communist I mean, we, got, we have elements in our country that are trying to make it that way. The book burning thing, I mean, the book banning thing is one, one element of tr trying to do that. These are elements outside our government doing this crap. Okay? Uh, but, you know, we, we're, we're smart enough to recognize it when we see it. All right? And uh, they might get away with it for a while, but eventually, you know, a... A retaliation is already is, is orchestrated and, and, and puts it down. In China, that doesn't happen because uh, everything is done at the barrel of a gun. I mean, if you don't do what they tell you, you're dead. 
you know, if you don't uh, jump as high as they want you to, you're dead, okay? If you don't send your son or daughter off to the military uh, to be a troop there in their, in their military, you know, you're dead. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, that's how it is over there. And, you know, the only other country that's worse than China, I think, is North Korea. I mean, I watched a video on YouTube about, you know, some tourists that went to North Korea. And I don't know how the fuck they got their ass in there. Okay, it was a bunch of uh, uh, older people and elderly people who took a trip to, to North Korea. And much of what they, uh, you know, I'm surprised they let them videotape what they videotaped. Uh, because apparently they were pretty, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, North Koreans that were g guiding them around everywhere. Okay, we're pretty much like, oh, you can't film here, you can't take a picture of that, you can't do... You know, they were they were on top of these people with their cameras, but yet they got enough footage to fill at least an hour's worth of stuff, content on YouTube. Um, and somebody had, uh, one of them had taken a video of, uh, uh, I can't remember what city it was in. Um, shit, what the hell was the name of that damn city? They were in a city of, in, in uh, North Korea. It was one of their major cities, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But uh, they were in their apartments, uh, or their hotel rooms, I guess. And the city had, there was, there was nobody outside. It's a big fucking city, you know, almost as big as New York. Not a soul out there except for this one girl who was wearing a uniform. And she was acting like she was directing traffic outside. There was not a single car on the street. But her job is to do this, this dance outside in like she's directing traffic, whether there's traffic or not, like a, like a, a, a stoplight would be, okay, she's act, basically told to act like a fucking robot, okay, because they don't have the stoplights, they have traffic directors out there, but nobody's on the road. So this guy was videotaping this girl out there, you know, who, I don't know how many hours she's got to do this, but she's out there doing this. And he kept, you know, he was panning around, showing how there's not a person out there on the street. Okay, why there was nobody out there, I don't know. It was like it was like a damn scene out of a zombie flick, you know, where everybody's dead or something. You know, it was it was it was eerie as all fucking hell, I'll tell you. Because you just cross over the border into South Korea, and you've got a whole different world, <laughs> you know, in South Korea. But you go into North Korea, and it's like you're you're in a uh, in a whole other planet. You know, North Korea is so, this is such a, it's like a place that you would never, you would think you'd never find on earth, but it's there. It's there. I mean, this, all the horrors you can imagine about a, a, a dystopian kind of government and all that, it, it exists there. You know, the 1984 shit and all that stuff, it exists there. Okay. All that stuff about that, that's North Korea. Okay. And the people in North Korea have their own history they learn. It's not history that's backed up by fact. It's backed up by what the state tells them. So their version of what the Korean War was is a whole different version than what we learn in the United States, okay? It's all different. And I think about the Republicans in America who are trying to tell kids what they can or can't, uh, you know, learn in history class and how... You know, they're sitting here accusing the United States of becoming a, a fascist dictatorship when they're the ones that are aiming our, the nose of our country in that direction. There ain't a fucking Democrat that's out there talking about, you know, banning books or anything like that. Not one. But you got Republicans all over the, the federal government in the local area, you know, going through books, you know, book by book by book, trying to figure out which ones are the worst uh, to keep on the shelves, okay? And they're succeeding because people are not stopping this. In nine months, 1,500 fucking books, okay? Where are the people that are supposed to stop this shit? You know? This shouldn't even be happening. Why is there not enough, uh, wasn't there enough pushback? You know? So, it's when people don't do anything is when, when stuff goes, goes awry, all right? And with North Korea... Uh, because their history, you know, is really kind of rooted in that whatever kind of government you want to call it. Um, you know, to them, that's normal for them. They wouldn't know what to do with themselves if they ever came to the United States. 
You know, I, there have been people from North Korea who, who uh, immigrated to the United States, and I'm telling you, they, they can tell you some pretty hor horrific shit about living in that country over there, okay? And how it must have, how it felt for them when they came into this country and saw how the freedom that exists here, you know, the way women are in this country and, and the way, you know, we, we run with our government and stuff like that, you know, it, it's, it's a, you know, it's like, like them stepping onto another planet where it would be the reverse for us stepping onto another planet going over there. You know, over here, there is no oppression, you know, not like over there in North Korea. You're not going to find people standing on a on an empty street directing traffic, okay? <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> you know, like I said, I don't know how these people got to get over there and 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 just vacation there. That would be the last place on this planet I would want to go, and that's half the reason why things happen where people get kidnapped in these countries and they're held hostage. If you don't put yourself in these dangerous goddamn places, people, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> Stay out of the areas you're not wanted in. If they don't like Americans, that means you. It doesn't mean just the government. It means everyone that's American. Okay? They don't want you over there. Stay the fuck out of their country. All right? And, uh, you know, because people are people, no matter what country you're in. And if they don't like you, they're not going to make it easy on you. All right? These people don't know the difference between an innocent bystander and a, and a soldier, okay? In their minds, if you're all part, if you all come from the same country, you're all bad, period. So they don't want you over there. Now, I'm not saying these people the, that went in, in this video were, were treated badly, but they certainly weren't given freedoms that they wanted. You know, everywhere they went, it was a very controlled area. You know, if every restaurant, you know, they, you know, there was people around that were watching them and stuff i mean was they were very very uh scrutinized you know and uh, they weren't allowed to debate with some of these people their version of history if they told you that the united states lost the war uh against north korea okay um uh, and that uh you know it you know that it wasn't a stalemate you you have to accept it you can't you can't say no that ain't how it happened you can't do that. These people believe wholeheartedly in their in the fiction that they're given, you know. So it was a very interesting thing. I, you know, I'm going to try uh, and find that again if, uh, and put a link up here on there so some of you can watch it if you haven't seen it. Because it, I don't know how I stumbled across it. Um, I get all kinds of recommendations on YouTube of videos that they think will interest me because I watch a lot of documentaries. And a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, like places you can go and, you know, because people videotape everywhere they go. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I look at like people that have gone uh, to different parts of the world, you know, on vacation and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And that popped up there and, and they, I guess they figured you'd, I would be interested in seeing that. And it wasn't that long, so I said, oh, what the hell, you know, let's see what North Korea looks like, <laughs> you know, and boy, what a interesting video that was and, and it's like I said I'm surprised that they allow that uh, they allowed it to be uh, recorded as much as they did you know uh, some places these people couldn't even go see because one minute the government said it was okay and the next minute they said no they can't go there you know so you know. so um, yeah I mean that's you know what's happening in Shanghai is really it's really kind of a nightmare well it is a nightmare it's a fucking nightmare these people are going through um, it's it's a, a horror that uh, you know we can't we wouldn't really understand in this country because our government wouldn't do that to us but uh, over there shit they didn't think twice they didn't bat an eyelash okay on locking these people up you know their own goddamn uh, compatriots you know, locking the, the doors to the building so they can't get in there, okay, and taking the doors off their individual apartments and putting paper there. You know, I mean, what the hell? They treat these people like babies, okay? Their government treats these people like babies, and you would think, why don't they revolt? It's because that's, to them, that's normal. You know, they can't imagine not being treated that way. And that's why that none of these people 
while trying to get, escape through the paper because they believe that, you know, something bad is going to happen to them if they do. And maybe they're right. Maybe something bad will happen, you know. And it's that fear that keeps these people in line. And the, the stronger the fear is, the more they're going to follow what you say. That's why they, they're so, so rigid with them, with their own people. You know, it's, it's a sad fucking reality, but that's, that's the way it is in China. So, anyway, that's about all I wanted to talk about today. So, you guys, if you uh, want to uh, uh, keep your ears open to COVID news locally and whatnot, and uh, uh, subscribe and comment. Uh, and uh, so, hopefully, uh, things will get better on the pandemic side of things in the United States. And hopefully, uh, there'll be some improvement here with uh, prices and stuff for us so that way we can try to have a good summer, you know, where people can actually go somewhere and do something. Uh, because I don't see how the travel industry is really going to be doing well this year, the way things are. So take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you another time.